Uh, welcome to Hannity. We are tracking multiple major stories that will impact your life, including the shocking scene from New York City. Look at this. Friday night, 11.30 a.m., broad daylight, the streets of New York City. That man right there, beaten, slashed, robbed by a group of 12 people. Now, make no mistake, violent crime is now spiraling out of control in many of America's major cities. Yep, it was back to rioting in Portland, Seattle, and Denver last week. Now, this is what defunding the police and helping people arrested get free bail, <coughs> Kamala Harris, and not speaking out and calling riots riots like last summer. This is what it looks like. More scary times. We'll have a lot more tonight. Also, Nancy Pelosi's prayerful and solemn duty, radical extremists, to smear the president, even out of office, for all eternity, has now officially reached the Senate. Coming up, we'll have the very latest details from the Democrats' unconstitutional post-presidential impeachment charade, uh, by the way, which is falling apart. It is now officially blowing up in the faces of Biden and every other Democrat in the swamp. Senators, by the way, Republicans, Rubio, Cornyn, Cotton, all now forcefully speaking out against the impeachment. As of today, it's a foregone conclusion. There will not be uh, a conviction, but an acquittal. Everyone knows the trial's dead on arrival. Get this, Chief Justice John Roberts rightly now refusing to preside over the trial, the latest shift show. And, of course, if Biden really cared about unity, uh, he could put a stop to the shift show right now. So much for that unity BS, words, no meaning, just, you know, smoke and mirrors. Obviously, he doesn't care about unity at all whatsoever. He's out of office. Aren't you happy? All right. Now, by the way, that is why the first 24, 36, well, 24 now executive orders, take a look at this. It reads like a wish list for the radical extreme socialist base. They're the ones in charge. And Biden is now halting all border wall construction. He's stopping all deportations. Amnesty is on the way. He's incorporating illegal immigrants into the U.S. Census and pausing student loan payments. And, of course, he's waging a war on American oil and gas. And this has real consequences for real people, our friends, our neighbors. Thousands of people now being laid off because of Biden's cancellation of the Keystone XL pipeline, the Biden-Obama administration. Remember, they, in their years, four years ago, uh, plus had predicted $2 billion in wages if the pipeline was ever built. But they never lifted a finger. Donald Trump got that done, and now Biden's radical agenda is literally taking thousands of American jobs, hurting American families, all while economic stress is the norm for way too many of our fellow Americans because of COVID and, of course, the subsequent oppressive lockdowns. We're going to hear from one of those workers, a fellow American, in just a moment. What's his life like now? And with the stroke of a pen, this guy lost his job. So to Joe's fawning fans and big tech, the media mob, this is why, yes, I'm critical now, this early, of the Biden administration. This is why I rightly called his first week in office a pending disaster. The mob saying, Hannity, he's, he's already saying that Joe's failing. Well, these policies will always fail. Why? I have chapter four of my book, Live Free or Die, America and the World on the Brink. It actually has a whole chapter in there that says socialism and its history of failure. It will fail again. This is why we will continue to vet Joe Biden and all of his policies. 99% so-called journalists in this country, they're now on, well, we'll call it a sycophantic vacation. So, per usual, we end up doing their jobs for them all. And at the same time, we'll continue to fight back against cancel culture. It is now worse than ever, more oppressive than ever, more chilling than ever. It's an embrace of authoritarianism. And some of the left are calling on the government to censor, regulate freedom of speech. In other words, speech they don't like or agree with. And some even on so-called news networks, fake news, CNN, MSDNC, they want Fox News ripped off the airways. They want this show canceled. Talk about cancel culture. They have the biggest propagandists. They themselves, they're the biggest purveyors of lies, hatred in the country. 
I have five years worth of never ending material. Others have continuously and enthusiastically, you know, praised big tech censorship of conservatives and, of course, their censorship of real stories in the lead up to the election. Senator Josh Hawley, he had a book deal canceled. They actually wanted to use the 14th Amendment to remove him and Ted Cruz for daring to ask for an audit of election. Well, sorry if you disagree, but that's what this country was built on. All because they supported, yes, a 10 day audit of our election results, something Democrats in the past have done. In an op ed, New York Post, Senator Hawley encouraged all Americans to take a stand against this muzzling of America. Senator Hawley will join us in just a moment. First, we begin this Monday night. We turn our attention to the Biden administration's ongoing, quote, efforts against COVID 19. Remember, it was just a few months ago when then candidate Biden frequently used the pandemic to bash President Trump in one of his rare appearances. In fact, he personally blamed the president pretty much for every COVID death. Not China. No, the dog bites, the bee stings. You're feeling sad. There's only one person on this earth to blame, Donald Trump. Take a look. If, he, if the president had done his job, had done his job from the beginning, all the people would still be alive. All the people, I'm not making this up, just look at the data. Look at the data. Look at the data. Okay. Joe and Kamala claim they had a plan to beat COVID-19. They vowed to, quote, get the virus under control, deliver immediate relief to working families. Apparently, that's not the case. Look at this, Joe. Guess what? Now there's nothing he can really do to change the trajectory of the pandemic. That's not what he was saying in the campaign at all. Take a look. If we fail to act, there will be a wave of evictions and foreclosures in the coming months on, as this pandemic rages on, because there's nothing we can do to change the trajectory of the pandemic in the next several months. Now, keep in mind, multiple vaccines have already been deployed thanks to Donald Trump. And by the way, around a million doses are being distributed and being put in people's arms every single day just like during the Trump administration. And remember those international travel bans President Trump implemented, well, actually, in about six days, exactly one year ago, to stop the spread of COVID-19? Now the Biden administration, they themselves are extending the travel restrictions. But you remember, after the president implemented that, uh, yes, last year, about a year ago on the campaign trail, there was Joe out there tweeting that the travel ban was hysteria, xenophobic, and fear mongering. And again in March, Biden again called the COVID 19 travel restrictions, restrictions xenophobic, fear mongering. Well, I guess that makes Joe Biden xenophobic and a fear monger. Our own Peter Ducey asked Biden's press secretary about this, and as per usual, the answer, well, misleading. When President Trump was imposing travel restrictions in March, specifically on China, then candidate Biden called it xenophobic and fear mongering. So now President Biden is putting travel restrictions on people coming in from other countries. What word do we use to describe that? Well, I don't think that's quite a fair articulation. Uh, the president has been clear that he felt the Muslim ban was xenophobic. He overturned the Muslim ban. Uh, he also, though, has uh, supported, um, and he himself, even before, or we did, I should say, even before he was inaugurated, steps, uh, travel restrictions in order to keep the American people safe. She really think we're that stupid, or is she just really not aware that Biden was talking about the COVID-19 travel restrictions? Now, tonight, at least, one thing has become very clear, and that is the Biden administration does not plan to hold China responsible for anything. Take a look. China is engaged in conduct that it hurts American workers, blunts our technological edge, and threatens our alliances and our influence in international organizations. We, what we've seen over the last a uh, few years is that China is growing more authoritarian at home and more assertive abroad. And Beijing is now challenging our security, prosperity, and values in significant ways that require a new U.S. approach. And this is one of the reasons, as we were talking about a little bit earlier, that we want to approach this with some strategic patience. Well, I guess that's going to make China great, Russia great on energy. The Middle East, they're happy we're going to get out of the oil and energy business because they'll be made great and make a lot of money too. 
patience for China, but not the Keystone XL pipeline. Clearly, a friendly relationship with the malignant regime, hostile regime that they are, that infected the world with COVID-19 is more important to Biden. Hmm. Joe son, zero experience hunter, made all that money. Then the thousands of workers, by the way, that actually relied on, let's see, high-paying career jobs in the energy sector, the Keystone Pipeline among them to put food on the table.